And I'd like to invite to the stage, Marcello. Yeah! Buonasera. Mi chiamo Marcello, sono italiano, ne sono molto fiero. Però purtroppo questo discorso lo devo fare in inglese. This is Giulio, nonno Giulio, Giulio Mongardi, my great-grandfather. He was born in Massa Lombarda, which is about 260 kilometers down the autostrada towards Imola. And he was born very poor. Uh, he didn't learn how to read or write until late in his life. But uh, he was a remarkable man. In his 30s, he had an opportunity to climb out of this dire situation. Um, there was an expedition leaving for Africa from Massa Lombarda, for Abyssinia, which is modern-day Ethiopia. So Giulio joined the expedition. He left behind his young family. Uh, they knew he was going. Um, <laughs> and the goal was to bring all five of them into a better life. Uh, he got to Abyssinia, and within months, the whole expedition was decimated by uh, disease and tribal warfare and mismanagement. And Giulio was left with nothing, less than before. But he didn't go back to Italy. Something pushed him to go to um, what at the time was Germany, East Africa. It's now Tanzania. So he walked from Ethiopia to Tanzania. Um, and he managed to settle high on the slopes of Kilimanjaro, where he built a house. Uh, it's in a place now called Marangu, which is where the gate to the National Park is. If you've climbed that mountain, you've been within a kilometer of this house. Um, so while he was doing this, um, it occurred to me that his learning network were the people he could touch and people with an earshot of him, because he couldn't read a book, he couldn't read a letter, he couldn't write a letter. Uh, but he built a house, and he learned how to farm, and he built a business. Um, his business was very important. He became a trader, so he would take goods from the in interior, and he would caravan them to the coast and sell them, and then get goods from the coast and caravan them to the interior. It took six weeks. It was terrifyingly dangerous. Um, there were warring tribes. There was wild animals. It was not uncommon for people to die on this trip. But when he got to the coast, the prize was immense. There were other people there that he could exchange ideas with. There were Italians and Greeks and Germans and British and Indians and Africans, and there were traders and businessmen and farmers, and he could exchange ideas and become smarter and do things better and get different machinery. But most important was the hotel owner, where he stayed, was a Greek man who would take dictation from Giulio, and he would write a letter, or he would speak a letter uh, and to his wife, and he would put some money in the envelope and mail it off. And three months later, Nonina would get uh, a letter and know that at least if he's dead, it's in the last three months. Um, and she had enough money to feed her children. She looked overjoyed, of course. <laughs> this is, I went through a few slides to get this one. Um, so uh, this was an, a, kind of an incredible way to live. And, um, and so his son wrote a book about him. And I went to Tanzania in 2003 to translate that book into English. So while I was there, I climbed Kilimanjaro. And I was deep in his story, you know, thinking about him and uh, how he lived. And one night, I was in the hut, you sleep in these huts, and uh, my phone rang, and Nokia, it was 2003, uh, Nokia rang, and I answered it. And it was my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, from uh, she was calling me from the corner of Chambers uh, and Hudson in the West Village of Manhattan. She taught at PS3. And uh, we talked, and it was crystal clear. It was like she was just on the other side of the door. And we were madly in love. I told her things that I'm sure Giulio wrote in his letters to Nonina. And, um, and I hung up, and I remember lying there and thinking, my gosh, this is amazing what he went through to make that connection. And a mere 110 years later, what I'm going, what I didn't have to go through to make that connection. It was incredible to me. Um, 
so fast forward another 13 years, and these guys come in the equation. These are my children. This is Luca and Sofia. And so I tell them this story, and uh, their minds are duly blown, like mine was. Uh, Luca's mind is blown by breathing air, I think. <laughs> He's always like that. But Sofia's more discerning. So she, her mind is blown, but for a different reason. This is what blows her mind. She's like, so it's a big plastic play phone chained to a robot, and everyone uses the same one? And that's just the beginning. I had survived public phones in New York. Um, so it just occurred to me that things are happening faster and faster. And um, so really, it's about Sofia and Luca. So Giulio learned from the people around him, like we all do. And that was it. That was his learning network. That was the extent of it. Our learning network, or Sofia's and Luca's, is really anyone on Earth who has an internet connection. They can share ideas with them. They don't even have to know how to read and write. They can just look in a camera and talk, right? Anyone on Earth with an internet connection is a potential member of their learning network, however trivial. So, well, actually, you know the astronaut who was in space um, for a year, uh, Scott Kelly? He ran an AMA on Reddit. So you go to reddit.com, AMA means ask me anything. And so for a certain amount of time, anyone could write him questions, and he would answer them. He'd take 37 days to answer them. And so really, it, the person doesn't even have to be on Earth. Um, one question he got was, why are your arms crossed in all the pictures? And he said, because if you don't, without gravity, they just float up. <laughs> And uh, I thought it was a silly question, but anyway. So what does that mean for us um, as educators? I think it has a profound effect on the work we do. I think we're coming to a realization that we no longer peddle in facts, right? We no longer bring knowledge to students. The knowledge is all there. We just need to find ways for them to get to it. But I would go further and say that an increasingly important part of our job is connecting our students. Steven Johnson talks about creating a forum, a place, a space, where hunches, that, are, that Sophia's hunches can collide with the hunches that other people have. And it's in those spaces, the spaces that we're able to provide, it's in those spaces that creativity and innovation flourish. Thank you.